So you want to study music? Well, congratulations, you're trying to get in one of the most luxurious study programs in the world. Now, the question is, where do you want to study? Welcome to Germany! We are not only having awesome cars and a very refined fashion taste, <laughs> we actually have a lot of great music universities here in Germany. And the reason is pretty obvious. I mean, if you look into music history, you will see that a lot of the greatest composers of all time actually came from Germany or a German-speaking region. Now, I wish we also had Frédéric Chopin, but you know, we can't have everything. Now, anyway, as you might already know, language has a big impact on music and culture in general has an impact on music. So why don't you want to come to Germany and study here? What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anique. I'm a classical pianist and I've been studying music for the last 10 years here in Germany or more specifically in Stuttgart. And I just received my certificate for my concert exam, but they wrote the wrong birth date on it. So I guess it doesn't count. Anyway, so in this video, I will give you a short overview of how studying music in Germany looks like, what you have to do to apply for the university, and give you just a little insight in how my study program looked like. So without further ado, let's get started. So we have 24 music universities in Germany and the study program looks everywhere a little bit different but all in all it's probably pretty much the same. Now we are using the bachelor master system so we have eight semesters bachelor, four semester master and four semester concert exam which is in other countries considered as a PhD but in Germany it's, it's concert exam. Depending on the instrument that you want to study it always looks a little bit different but I can only speak for piano studies, especially in Stuttgart, because again, the program looks everywhere a little bit different. But what is the same everywhere is you are going to have an entrance exam. In this entrance exam, you're going to have a theoretical part and a practical part. <laughs> so in the practical part, you will have to play in front of the jury on your instrument. The jury is normally built up with all the professors that are teaching this instrument and they will decide if they want to take you or not. Now, most of the cases, and this is something that I can really just recommend to everyone who wants to study music, you should get the contact to a professor before you actually apply for the entrance exam. Because the chances that you're going to convince a professor in just five minutes is very, very low. It still happens though, but it's very low. You should definitely go and introduce yourself to the professor beforehand. Also, the most important part in studying music is actually studying your own instrument so you should definitely check if that professor is going to match you with your character with the way you're learning i mean just try to check the vibes before you go to anyone so this is the practical part which is the most important part i know a couple of people who failed actually the theoretical part but they still got a chance to retake this theoretical entrance exam i think after the first semester or something if there is actually a professor who is willing to take them. But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't prepare for that because it's actually not that difficult, especially because you will find test exams on a lot of websites of these universities. Now the exam is going to look everywhere a little bit different, but everywhere they will ask you for the basic. And in some places, maybe there are some more things asked, but all in all, you can definitely prepare for that. If you want to know how these entrance exams look like, I give you some links down below of some universities that I found. Okay, now how does this whole thing look like? As I said before, the bachelor studies usually take eight year, uh, eight semesters, sorry, eight years. <laughs> and after the fourth semester, there's going to be an exam where you'll have to play again in front of a jury. And there they are going to decide which way you're going to take. At my university, there were three ways. So there was the pedagogical program, the pedagogical artistic program, so it's like a mixture, and the artistic program, which is normally the hardest to enter. And depending on which program you got, your study program is going to look very, very different. Now in the first four semesters, you will definitely have a lot of music theory, listening training, like ear, training, you know, just listen to intervals, chords, um, being able to sight read and sing the melody line or the bass line or whatever, and many, many other things. And that's basically training your inner ear. And then also we had some sight reading lessons. These were especially there to give you an overview of how it looks like to be an accompanist. We have the solo pianist and we have the accompany pianist, which are two different jobs. Like really, it, it looks completely different. Of course, in the end, we are just playing piano, but the job itself is very, very different. At my university, 
university, we also had the class improvisation, which was very, very cool. It was one of my favorites. And I definitely needed it because I'm really bad at improvising. But it is so important because by improvising, you are connecting the theory with the practical stuff and suddenly everything makes sense, you know? <laughs> Same counts for another class that I had. It was um, Literaturkunde, how do I say that? Well, it was basically concentrating on analysis and interpretation. That was my favorite class, I would say, next to my solo piano lessons, of course. But these classes were so cool because you were asked to analyze a piece that you're playing right now in a lot of different parameters. And out of these parameters, you had to show your interpretation and explain your interpretation. So it was suddenly making sense to give more thoughts into your interpretation instead of just your gut feeling, you know? Again, this has a lot to do with music theory. So the music theory part is very important and you should definitely not skip that part. And then there are some other classes like music history and instrumental pedagogy. All in all, this should be the basic education that you get in the bachelor. Now, if you're wondering how many people are getting into music studies, I have to say that there is not so many people actually. When I applied for the bachelor entrance exam in Stuttgart, there were between 150 to 200 participants and only three people got a place. So the chances to get a place are very, very low. And I can understand why, because studying music is a very luxurious study program because you have lots of classes that are just one-to-one. -one, so you are alone with your professor or just five people with one professor. So you're getting a lot of like direct work together with the professors and you can't have like big classes there to teach them all the things that we did. <laughs> I mean, it would only work for something like music history or basic music theory. And there we actually were also more people in the class. But yeah, you see, they can't afford to have so many students. Unfortunately, this also means that studying music is very exclusive. So they will only take the best of the best. If you want to further study like your master or concert exam, the chances to get into it are getting smaller and smaller. So honestly, hard work, like practicing a lot and connections, networking, that's the most important thing here. <laughs> The music universities in Germany are financed by the state, which means that we don't have so high study fees here. And actually you're not paying at all. Now you have to be a little bit careful because if you are not a European citizen, in some places in Germany, there might be some higher costs right now, but nothing compared to the US. I just looked up how much it would cost to study one semester at Julia school and no, just come to Germany. <laughs> so here in Germany, you would not have to pay any of these fees if you are a European citizen. The only thing that I had to pay during my bachelor's and master's was the administrational fees, which were around 200, 250 euro per semester, which is really nothing compared to what they have in the US. But during my concert exam, you would have to pay 1000 euro for one semester plus the administrational fee. So these are the study fees, but depending on where you want want to study, you always have to see how much renting an apartment would cost or living in a student dorm. If you want to, for example, live in Stuttgart, the rents here for apartments are extremely high. So I was very lucky that I chose a place where I can just stay at home and practice on my grand piano because I don't think that I would have continued studying piano if I was only able to practice on a e-piano or a upright. In Stuttgart, they have a basement full of practicing rooms and in every practicing room, there's a grand piano, which is like super luxurious, I have to admit, but everyone can practice in these practice rooms, so the pianists won't have enough practicing rooms. So especially if you want to study piano, make sure you find a way to practice enough because I know also other people who went to practice during the night, like at 2 or 3 a.m. because they just couldn't practice during the day. That's a little bit tricky. All right, guys, this was the video for today. Thanks for watching. Are you planning to study music or are you already studying music? And are you planning to come to Germany maybe? Let me know in the comments down below. We'll see us in the next videos. Bye.